provide the motion. And you see that actually, there, there's, when you want to create a lot of electricity, you have to put in a lot of effort. So that's how, knowing, just knowing the um, Lorentz force idea, we can generate electric fields from motion. Now this is usually not, for some reason, this is not the way it's taught in the text. In your text, I've never seen a book that started out from this, and starting from what you already know, the Lorentz force from fields and forces, generate electric fields from it. I don't know why people just don't take that connection. That's probably historically not the way they did it. The way they did it. Well, let me uh, distinguish two things. One is that we must move the wires with respect to the field. We put in some effort, and in fact, it turns out, as they say, it may take considerable effort to move the wires, because you don't get that current for free. That would be, nature would be too kind if they just gave us electricity for free. You have to put in some effort. And you'll notice that the, the, the uh, um, oh, here's another important point. Uh, I pull the thing this way. The voltage that's induced is in the perpendicular direction. It's in the direction of the wires. You've got to be careful of that. Then notice, and here's where the, um, this contrariness of nature comes in. Once you have that current, let's say you actually complete the circuit out here, put, put that electric field that you generated now through a, a, some resistor or a, say even a lamp or something and you generate electricity. So you actually get a, a, a real current flow as you're pulling this this way. And, and we, we, we decided that with the field going into the blackboard, the current would be in this direction. Now, the, 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 the thing called Lenz's law tells you that your effort to pull it with this velocity will be resisted by the fact that you've created current. Because look what happens. If I create a current here, this current reacts with the, the field that's here, right? Because this current is, is living in, in a magnetic field. So this current feels a force. And that force is, was given by uh, the Ampere law, women's lib, L-I-B. OK, so here we have an L, here we have an I, and here we have a B. So this, there's a force here. And it's I cross B, as luck, luck would have it. So we have I in this direction, cross with B, which means there's a force, due to this fact that I've induced the current, there's a force here opposing my motion. That's the kicker. See, so as you create the current, the very fact that that current being in a field, it fights your motion. That's Lenz's law, that you always, the, the current that you generate will always oppose the, the change that you're trying to create. So you don't get electricity for free. We'll see that more, but that, that's a very important point. That this force here is this one, and it opposes the direction. If you change the direction, the, the force of the, that the field will act on that, will change its direction. No which way you go, it will fight you. Yes, sir? Uh, so, that's right. If, so right now, no current can flow. Well, or only, not in any steady fashion. Right, so all you do is build up a voltage like on the capacitor. So I build up a voltage across here, but no current flows. And in fact, that makes it easy to move this because no current is flowing, I don't have any back force. Once I close the circuit, you'll see this next time because I'm going to have you generate some current. And when, you've, when it's open, it'll be easy. Well, when I close the circuit, you're going to have to sweat to make the current flow. You'll see, I'm do the next, I don't have time this time because we're going to be kicked out of here at 4 o'clock. And I, I wanted you to actually do this with your hand. I don't know if you've ever generated electricity with your own body but with my turning a crank. But uh, you, you, when, when the circuit closes, current flows, and then you can build up the resistance, the, this back force. When force, yes, sir. Okay. No, they, they'll stop. But you, the, the push on them will stop. The, the thing that's push, pushing them is the fact that you have a Lorentz force here. The Lorentz force is, is making the electrons move up the wire. Once you're out of the magnetic field, your Lorentz, once B is gone, you could be moving, but if you, you need a B. This, is the, this, the, this B here, see, because I'm in the magnetic field, as, as I'm moving this way, this is what's generating the, the, the voltage to drive the current around. I have to be in the field. In other words, once I pull this out, let's do it. OK, I start out here, and I move the wires out. But once I leave the magnet, that, I stop generating. Nothing out here. Only when, only when the wires are cutting the magnetic field will I get something. But once I'm out here, I need a magnetic field to drive the, 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 um, the current around the wires. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. You worry about inertia. Well, why do they just keep going? Well, there's resistance in the wires. And eventually, it's sort of like, um, uh, yeah, it's like the analogy of uh, if, if you had no resistance, the thing could keep going forever. But if the current is actually flowing through a wire and there's no push, it's it's, um, you have to keep pushing to keep the, the, the current going because there's resistance in the wire. So like you're driving a car. You, you have to keep your foot on the accelerator to maintain 60 miles an hour. If your engine stopped, you wouldn't keep going at 60 miles an hour. Eventually, you'd stop slow because there's resistance, there's friction. And so you must, in a, in a wire, keep the thing going. In a vacuum, no. If you started out, the, 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 you can maybe do a, 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 um, a voltage, a Lorentz force on a particle in a vacuum, get it going, take the field away, and a particle in a vacuum would keep going straight. But in a wire, no. It's, it has to stumble through the, the, the copper atoms. It's not so, it, it loses. Yes, sir? A superconductor, that's another story. Yeah, that's, that's possible. In fact, you could do that. In fact, they do do that. <laughs> what you can do, this man brought up superconductors. Uh, superconductors. So what you can do with a superconductor, now that you mention it, which you should, wish you hadn't, but <laughs> no, it's a, great, it's a great thing. So what they do with superconductors is something like this. Very good. You get a super, what's called a superconductor, you make it into a, a loop, and you put it in a magnetic field. Put it in a magnetic field. Uh, now you start out, see a superconductor becomes, its resistance goes to zero at a certain critical temperature, Tc. And it, it's a perfect conductor. It's like what he wants, uh, a current to flow forever without anybody putting a battery on it. Okay, the superconductor do that. So what you do, you take this piece of metal, you put it in a magnetic field when it has resistance. You cool it down, so the resistance finally goes to zero, but it's got some magnetic field inside it. And then you turn the magnetic field off. And as you turn the magnetic field off, 
you induce a current. This is one get to next, actually. You induce a current in this loop in zero field. And like you said, the current now will do what you said. Maybe it'll keep going around because there's no resistance. And you come back 10,000 years from now, which I hope you will, uh, and the current will still be flowing. Because then there's no resistance. It's a superconductor. And you can get this effect by cooling a, a metal with a field in it, turn the field off. As we'll see, that induces a current. But now it's a superconductor, and there's flow without resistance. And that will be, that will be steady forever. 10,000 years or something. It's a little bit, but close enough to forever <laughs> for my purposes. <laughs> so that's, those are very good points. Very thoughtful. Very thoughtful. I, I like the way you guys are thinking about things, because once you get these principles, you can think of all kinds of uh, fun things to do. Um, let's go and talk about, very quickly, make sure we understand um, um, what we've seen so far. Now, look at these two apparatuses. From your distance, they look alike, and they pretty much are. One of them is, this one, I think, is a generator. No, it isn't. It's a motor. <laughs> this is a generator, because I can turn it. This one has a handle, but they, they've taken the O-ring off that allows me to turn it. So this one is a motor. Namely, that if I put this like this, Oh my. Yeah. Whoops. That O-ring is not too happy up there. Okay. Okay. So the, the, here, here's the point. What I've done is I put current. I put current into a coil. Still going. Good guy. What I've done there, I start out with a magnetic field, those two bar magnets, north south. I have a coil. I put current into the coil. There's current here. There's a magnetic field here. I get a force on that loop by LID turns the loop because the, the current is this way, the field is that way, uh, and let's see, how do I do that? I cross B. Well, oh, I cross B is this way. So it's going to turn, it's going to grab onto the sides here. B is this way, I is, say, that way, I, this way, cross B, will give me a force in, in this direction, gets this thing to turn. Okay, now turning it around, here, I have, I'm going to do serious thing, I'm going to have wires turning in a magnetic field. And because they're turning, there's going to be a Lorentz force on the, uh, current, the charges in this wire, telling them to move in one direction. And so they will generate a voltage, hopefully. Oh, let me make it a little clearer for you. OK, so now if I turn this, this wire in this magnetic field, the wires feel the L Lorentz force. The, car the charges will move in the wires and create a voltage, which is pretty much what I did there. But this is a little more like a real a generator. What you do in a generator is, is turn wires in a magnetic field. Or you could take a magnet and have the, the, the coils could be fixed, and you could turn the magnet. It doesn't matter. By serious argument, it doesn't matter relative which one you, you move. But this is kind of cute, like that. OK, so there's your motor and generator. And it's really the basic. You just turn the principles by, by that idea on, on its head. So this is the electric generator. In real life, you have this big time. This is a power plant where you have to turn this. But how do you turn it? Well, what they do is they create steam, which they blow on fan blades, which is called a turbine. The fan blades turn. It grabs this, and it turns it inside of a magnetic field. The catch is that you need energy to turn that. And because of that uh, rule down there, Lenz's law, if you generate current, it's actually going to oppose your motion. And so it takes real effort to turn that uh, coil when there's current going. Now, here's a cute idea. I got in, um, in 2011, this appeared in the Daily Cal, where the students are going to harness the energy in the RSF by attaching these kinds of gadgets to the elliptical machines. So as you exercise, you'll be turning a coil in a magnetic field. And in principle, you could light up the RSF. <laughs> I thought that was a good idea. I mean, uh, not very embarrassing because I saw this and I happened to teach the class for another teacher uh, because he was away. And I said, well, it's a very nice article, it's a good idea, but unfortunately, this, the writer didn't get the units right. She doesn't kilowatt hours and kilowatts and this and that. And sure enough, she was in the class. And she wrote to me later, sort of this apologetic thing. What did I do wrong? <laughs> what did I say that was wrong? Um, so, anyhow, but the idea is good. In fact, uh, it's my cure for obesity. If a kid wants to watch TV, let them <laughs> generate their own electricity. And uh, you, you'll cure TV watching too. You can patent that idea, but it won't go far, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, Okay, but the, the thing that happened was that historically, I think the way th this idea of moving something came about was first they got the idea of moving the magnet with respect to the wires. And this was Faraday's um, idea first. Other people were working on it. In fact, there was a professor in, in America that was working on this, but Michael Faraday in England gets the credit for it because he got it first. And the idea is that you move a magnet with respect to a coil, and the changing magnetic field produces a, a voltage. Now, by our thinking, it doesn't really matter whether the magnet is moving toward the coil, the coil is moving toward the magnet. We see that in either case, you're going to get a voltage in the wire. So it's just a difference how you describe it. Um, and um, so, and the key thing is motion, which is very interesting because, well, I don't want to get too philosophical, but the point was that, you know, we started out with electric and magnetic, and you had charges and you had magnetic poles. And the one didn't affect the other. But when you got moving charges, the QDT, you get a current, and that interacts with the magnetic pole. Now the question is, what do you have to do to get an electric effect from a magnetic side? So you have to get demagnetism, DT, some, some magnetic change to produce an electric effect. You see, it, it required, so there's kind of a symmetry here. So you have to get a... a for them to cross over, from, to go from electric to magnetic, you, you have to get some motion of one with respect to the other. And that seems to be a nice pattern of symmetry here. So we, we had Faraday's expression thing, briefly. And here's something you could check. When is the um, EMF largest in this case? Well, EMF won't, won't generate. If the B is constant, it won't. If it's increasing, you'll get a voltage kick. When it's steady, no. When it's going down, yes. In fact, if it's going down slower, you'll get less here. You'll get as much here as here, and it'll be the opposite sign to here. So you can look at that. And again, the, one of the, the kicker is that the, the currents that are generated always oppose the change. 
In other words, you're trying to produce, you're trying to produce electricity with changing field. Whatever changing field you have, it will create a magnetic field opposing you. As an example, uh, if I move um, the uh, pole toward a, a loop, see this loop has no current in it, but as I move the north toward it, I generate a current in here. You could use your, um, uh, the, the direction that that current goes will be such as to create a north pole closest to this north pole, so that this is opposing this, which means that the flux lines will have to be coming out of that loop. And in order for them to come out of that loop, the current has to go in, oh, now the geometry here, oh, yeah, this is the top of the loop. The current has to go in that direction. In other words, the current has to go in this direction to produce a north pole going this way, right? You see that? And if I bring a north toward it, I have to create a north here so that they oppose each other. Because the, the current, otherwise, the cur if I generate a current that helped me, I would get electricity for nothing. In other words, if I create a south pole, it would pull it in and I get electricity and it would help it. Help me. Yes, sir. Okay, let's, let's do it. What, you, what would you have me do? Oh, okay. South pole going toward the loop? Okay, so now I want to create a south pole on the loop. So I want the lines to be coming in to, to, to the loop. In and so I'd have to get the current going this way. The current would go this way. If this is the loop. I, I, may, have, I may have drawn that differently from how he drew it. I think we have to evacuate. Oh, what we didn't do today was I wanted to show you the correction of this experiment, where if we do it right, uh, the, 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 the law of the first right-hand rule does work. But it's just then the projection screws things up because we get things upside down. OK, we'll worry about that another time. All right, yeah, yeah, it's cute, but we, we got it. OK, thank you all.